Hi guys. In this video, take a look at the introduction to the newton raphson method, the newton raphson method shown graphically, the newton raphson method as an iterative method, examples, and I'll finish with a summary. So what exactly is the newton raphson method? The change of sign method involves showing a root lies within a certain interval and then making the interval smaller and smaller to get the root to whatever desired accuracy that we wish. This diagram shows the change of sign method with the intervals getting smaller. However, this could be a long procedure. Our first iteration, having our endpoints of 1 and 2 and our midpoint of 1.5, gives us this as positive and this as negative, which gives us our new endpoints 1 and 1.5 here. And then we have positive and negative change of sign here. This is our second iteration, so we get our new endpoints for our third iteration being here and here. And then we have our positive here again and our negative here again, and so on. We can use another numerical method known as the newton raphson method as a quicker alternative when we're given an approximate value of the root. So let's show the newton raphson method graphically. Consider a sketch of the graph of a function with a given approximate value of the root. Let's say here we have our root, and we have some value here which gives us an approximate value x1 to the root. We can draw a tangent to the graph at that particular point and observe where the tangent crosses the x-axis. So we have our x1 here, which is our approximation to the root. We can draw a tangent to the curve at the point x1 and observe the point here, say x2, where the tangent crosses the x-axis. We can then find a point on the graph using the x-coordinate of the point where the tangent crosses the x-axis. So we have our x2 here, where our tangent crosses the x-axis, and then we can find the point corresponding to this on the graph. And we can then draw a tangent again at that new point on the graph, and see where this tangent crosses the x-axis. So again we have our x2, and we're going to be drawing a new tangent to the curve, at the point on the curve with x-coordinate x2, and then we have our root here, and we notice that our x3, where the tangent crosses the x-axis, is much closer to the root this time. We can repeat this method of drawing tangents many times to get as close as possible to the root. Let's say we have our root here, we can have our x1 here, and then our x2 here, and then our x3 here. And the values get closer and closer to the root each time. So what is the newton raphson method as an iterative method? We can summarise the newton raphson procedure in terms of algebra by considering the general equation of a line. Given a point on the line, which we're going to write as xn, yn, this will be important later, we can form the equation of that line by taking y, subtracting yn, and this will be equal to the gradient of the line m multiplied by x minus xn. We can write the equation of the tangent through the point on the curve y equals f of x, where x equals xn, in terms of the function f. We would have y minus f of xn, if the x-coordinate was xn, is equal to f prime of xn, because this would be the gradient of the tangent, multiplied by x minus xn. Knowing that the tangent crosses the x-axis, we let y equals 0 and rearrange the equation for the tangent. We set y equal to 0, and so we have our minus f of xn is equal to f prime of xn multiplied by x minus xn. And then we rearrange to get x, and we can divide to get the x minus xn is equal to minus f of xn over f prime of xn. And then finally, we can add xn to both sides, and we'll get that x is equal to xn minus f of xn over f prime of xn. For an approximate root of the equations f of x equals 0, a better approximation is given by an iteration formula. We set our x we have above equal to xn plus 1. And so this is equal to xn minus f of xn over f prime of xn. And this gives us an iterative formula for xn plus 1. The approximations will converge to a root as the values are substituted into the equation simultaneously. 
Suppose that x is a root of f of x equals 0. Then our iterative formula xn plus 1 is equal to xn minus f of xn over f prime of xn will mean that in general our xn tends to the root x, as long as our starting value is given as an approximation to the root, i.e. is quite close to the root. Let's take a look at some examples. Our first example tells us that given the equation e to the power of 0.2x minus 3 root x equals 0 has a root near x equals 11, we're asked to find the next approximate root to three decimal places using the newton raphson method. Our first step is to recall the newton raphson method as an equation. We have that xn plus 1 is equal to xn minus f of xn over f prime of xn. Our second step is to define the expression as a function. We have our expression e to the power of 0.2x minus 3 root x is equal to 0. And so to solve f of x equals 0, we set our f of x to be this expression on the left hand side, i.e. f of x is equal to e to the power of 0.2x minus 3 root x. Our third step is to find the value of the function when x equals 11. We were told that the equation has a root near x equals 11. And so we can take our f of x, which is equal to e to the power of 0.2x minus 3 root x, and substitute in x is equal to 11. Therefore we get f of 11 is going to be equal to e to the power of 0.2 times 11 minus 3 root 11. And we get minus 0.9249 to 4 decimal places. Our fourth step is to differentiate the function. Again we have our f of x is equal to e to the power of 0.2x minus 3x power of 1 half in index notation. And so we can differentiate and we'll get that f prime of x is equal to this number 0.2 in the power of the e multiplied by e to the power of 0.2x. And then we're going to get a minus, bring down the power so we get a 3 over 2 and then reduce the power by 1 so we get an x to the power of minus a half. Our fifth step is to find the value of the differentiated form of the function when x equals 11. So when x is equal to 11, we're looking for f prime of 11, and this is going to be equal to 0.2 multiplied by e to the power of 0.2 times by 11, minus 3 over 2 multiplied by 11 to the power of minus a half. And this is equal to 1.3527 to four decimal places. Our sixth step is to use the newton raphson method to find the next approximation. We're going to take our x0, our first approximation, to be our 11. And in general, the x1 is going to be given by x0 minus f of x0 over f prime of x0. We have that f of x0 is equal to minus 0.9249. And we similarly have that f prime of x0 is equal to 1.3527. And so therefore our x1 is going to be equal to 11 for our x0 minus the minus of 0.9249 divided by 1.3527. And this is equal to 11.684 to 3 decimal places. Our last step is to give the second approximation to 3dp as required. We have that x1, the next approximation, is equal to 11.684 to 3dp. Our second example asks us to consider the function f of x equals x cubed minus 4x plus 2. We're asked to use differentiation to find f prime of x and to take 0.5 as a first approximation to the root in the interval 0.51 and apply the Newton-Raphson procedure once to find a second approximation to the root to three decimal places. Our first step is to find the derivative of f of x. We have that our f of x in general is equal to x cubed minus 4x plus 2. And therefore our f prime of x by differentiating is going to be equal to 3x squared minus 4. Our second step is to recall the newton raphson method as an equation. We have the xn plus 1 we can find as xn minus f of xn over f prime of xn. 
Our first step is to find the value of f of 0.5. 0.5 is our first approximation to the root. And so we have our f of x in general is x cubed minus 4x plus 2. And to take our f of 0.5, and we're going to get 0.5 cubed minus 4 lots of 0.5 plus 2. Minus 4 times 0.5 is 2, and only plus 2, and they cancel out. And so we just get 0.5 cubed, which is 0.125. Our fourth step is to find the value of f prime of 0.5. As we found earlier, our f prime of x is equal to 3x squared minus 4. And therefore, f prime of 0.5 is going to be equal to 3 multiplied by 0.5 squared minus 4. 0.5 squared is 0.25, so we get 0.75 for the first term, and then we subtract 4, and this gives us minus 3.25. Our fifth step is to use the newton raphson method to find the next approximation. So our x0, our first approximation, is equal to 0.5. Therefore our next approximation, x1, is going to be equal to x0 minus f of x0 divided by f prime of x0. We have that f of 0.5 we found as 0.125 and similarly, f prime of 0.5, we found as minus 3.25. Therefore, our x1 is going to be the 0.5 for the x0 minus 0.125 divided by minus 3.25. And therefore, we get 0.538 to three decimal places as required. Hey guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level math resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap and smiley face and together let's make A-level maths a walk in the park.